space is turning private with plans for profits. Billionaires with deep pockets are funding ventures to get past the atmosphere, past the moon, onto Mars, building rockets and housing. But the most lucrative idea may be the least sexy, mining asteroids. This is an uh, iron nickel meteorite. Uh, and as you see, it's very heavy. Oh, wow. Chris Lewicki is president of Planetary Resources, a company in Redmond, Washington, which hopes to reach asteroids to extract water and mine for metals like platinum. It's an idea which sounds truly pie in the sky. But if it works, some believe it could be the first trillion dollar enterprise. How much do you think your average asteroid is worth in terms of minerals? <laughs> uh, it's it's something that has the possibility of boggling the mind. Everything that we hold a value here on Earth, metals, minerals, energy, real estate, is in infinite quantities in space. But getting from here to there takes baby steps. Last year, Planetary Resources lost its first satellite in a botched rocket launch. A second one successfully launched in July and is now in orbit, while a third, seen here being worked on, is scheduled to go up next year. The satellites are testing things like water detection sensors and laser communications, and the company says it's making some money selling technology, including 3D printing. And we can build up layer by layer very complex parts. Chris Lewicki helped put rovers on Mars for NASA, but he says in the new space race, the private sector can do more for less, a lot less. We can do this for a 20th the cost of a NASA mission, uh, maybe between 50 million and 100 million dollars uh, per each asteroid mission. The company hopes to choose its first asteroid target soon, one that's relatively close to the Earth, shows a high probability of holding water, and is large enough to be worth the investment. While the original intent of planetary resources was to mine for metals and bring them back to Earth, Lewicki says it's more feasible in the shorter term to mine first for something more important, water. We need it to survive, and water can also be separated into oxygen and hydrogen to make rocket fuel. Imagine a gas station in space. We don't need to drill, we don't need bulldozers, we don't need trucks, and we actually don't need people. This is something that we'll do with robots, using the energy from the sun to heat up the asteroid, to create vapor from the water, to capture that vapor on a collector that's cooled down by the cold temperature of the rest of space. And this is all done with no electricity bill and no humans. Maybe mine by 2035? That uh, depends what you refer to as mining. Uh, so, platinum. Uh, platinum, yeah, I would say by 2030s, I think that is something that uh, we'll have gotten a few asteroids under our belt, so uh, to speak. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but that leads to a bigger question. It's one thing to get to an asteroid, but can you own what you take from it? Should a private company own a piece of something in space? Well, private companies own pieces of things here on Earth, and uh, Earth is a spaceship. Lewicki and other private space entrepreneurs support legislation in Congress which would allow companies to own what they find in space, at least in the eyes of the United States. It's all astronomically ambitious. Imagine being able to print out an entire building or an entire structure or habitat or space station from the metal that you recover from a near-Earth asteroid. So that's in space. In space, without ever having to bring it back to the Earth. How concerned are you that someone may do it first? Oh, very concerned. Whether we're first, second, or third, uh, this is something that uh, there's not going to be just one asteroid mining company. There's not just going to be one space fuel depot. This isn't something that your grandchildren will one day see. This is something that's happening right now, right here in Redmond, Washington. We're making progress every week, every quarter, every year. Governments paved the way for the last 50 years, creating the technology, creating the knowledge, uh, showing that this can be done and it's gonna be private companies and private investors that'll now take the risk uh, to show that this is something that can be sustainable.